Hi there. Um, the whole metric imperial debate is one that's quite interesting to me. Um, I'm one of those crazy people who actually prefers imperial. Um, when I say imperial, I really mean the sort of foot pound units. You see, imperial only f refers to the system as used in Britain and the Commonwealth, whereas in America they use a slightly different system. Um, but it's still based on the foot and the pound. Um, I don't see any reason why. You know, scientists, engineers, etc., they can use metric if they like, that's fine, that's their prerogative. Um, metric with its uh, strict adherence to base units and derived units, and a strict adherence to a decimal, um, um, multiple, and submultiple system um, is obviously quite sensible for scientists who deal with the abstract and so on. Um, you know, however, the English units, the imperial units, quite work quite well for me. Um, I find them quite user friendly. I find it's quite useful. I find the sizes of the units quite useful, quite friendly. Um, the yard, the foot, the inch, and so on. The fact that there are twelve inches to a foot and three feet to a yard, and the rather confusing one thousand seven hundred and sixty yards to a mile. 16 ounces to a pound and so on doesn't really confuse me and it hasn't really confused many people who've used that system since the beginning of time or since the beginning of the system um, I mean the question you have to ask yourself is in everyday sort of circumstances how often will you need to know how many centimeters there are in so many kilometers I mean think about it I mean when was the last time you walked somewhere and someone said oh how far did you walk and you said yeah seven kilometers and they said, all right, what's that in centimetres? Well, um, a thousand metres to a um, kilometre, so that's 7,000 metres, that's seven, 70, 700,000 centimetres, yeah. yeah. I mean, it doesn't happen, does it? Likewise, the fact that it would be harder to work out that sum, if I gave you a figure in miles and you said how many inches was that, I mean, it would obviously be more difficult to figure out. I'll probably have to do it on a calculator or it would take me a minute to figure it out in my head but the question is in everyday terms it's not really relevant I mean those kind of questions are irrelevant so those kind of advantages of metric are really quite irrelevant to everyday life uh, for science and engineering they're quite useful um, don't get me wrong they're quite useful that's why scientists and engineers use it and that's why people sh everyday people shouldn't be forced to use metric if I want to buy a pound of something or a pint of something why should I be forced to use metric I mean why not just dual label products seriously what what's the problem with dual labeling products I just don't understand I mean in this country right now in Britain we're not fully metric um, we do use miles and yards on the road um, I work in DIY it's a mixture of metric and imperial usually feet and inches usually inches actually um, although it is increasingly more metric um, milk, beer, still labelled in pints, a lot of things aren't labelled in terms of pounds and ounces but they are actually in pounds and ounce sizes you often get 340 gram jars and 454 gram jars and 568 mil jars, well that's 12 ounces, 16 ounces and 20 fluid ounces respectively so imperial quantities just labelled metrically what's the problem seriously? in the UK um, some places sell milk by the litre and some people sell it by the pint. When it's sold by the pint, it's marked as five, six, eight millilitres, stroke one pint. When it's sold by the litre, it's not marked in terms of fluid ounces or pints. Why not mark dual market? And if people want to buy pints, they'll buy pints. If people want to buy litres, they'll buy litres. And the marketplace will decide which one is the default quantity. The question is, um, should they not both be labelled anyway? Of course they should. Um, you know, if it's a litre, it should be marked in terms of its ounces or pints, and if it's a pint, it should be marked in terms of how many litres it is. Um, and as I say, if the marketplace prefers litre containers of milk, then the marketplace will win out. That's fine. I don't see why that can't be the case and leave scientists and engineers to use metric if they want to. Um, you say almost all civilised countries in the world use metric. <laughs> it kind of implies that something's civilised about it. I mean, it's just a measuring system, um, which is, I would suggest, as user friendly or less user friendly than Imperial for most everyday purposes. Um, whereas I'd say that definitely for certain technical and scientific things it is definitely better. But you have to understand something, and this is something that a lot of people don't realise. 
Um, the English system, I'll call it the English system because there are various subsystems within it and subsystems within metrics. So I just say English because Imperial strictly, as I say, refers to UK and Commonwealth measures as opposed to US and so on. But anyway, what a lot of people don't realise is the English system is still used by engineers in America, by engineers in America, not just normal people, by actual guys who deal with units, engineers, and it used to be used in Britain and the rest of the Commonwealth as well. Um, because you see, the thing is, saying, oh, there's 12 inches to a foot, there's 17, 60 yards to a mile, oh, it's crazy. Yet, yeah, as we've already established, scientists, such conversion factors for scientists are cumbersome. That is why um, engineers who use the English system use a kind of pared down version of English. Um, now, there are various systems, just like there are various metric systems. But the basic system, the system that's used most often, has the second for the unit of time the foot for the unit of length which is divided decimally and multiplied decimally so for instance you have killer feet literally a thousand feet um, the pound is the unit of force usually and the unit of mass um, is the slug <laughs> funny name but yeah it's the slug and uh, based on the sort of acceleration of gravity it's about 32 feet per second um, that means that the slug is roughly 32 pounds mass um, or about 15 kilos um, you have units like the foot pound, which is the unit of work, um, the pound foot, which is torque. You have units like the um, Rankine, which is the absolute temperature degree, um, equivalent to the metrics Kelvin. Um, you know, you have all these different units that engineers use um, based on these core units, and usually by prefixing it this uh, in the sort of same metric fashion with kilos and mega and so on. Um, so what I'd say to you is the metric system is definitely better for technical use because of the simplicity of the conversions but the conversion argument is really irrelevant in everyday life in fact I'd suggest to you that having figures that are more divisible such as 12 and uh, 16 are more useful in everyday life and to that I would say also that to repeat that technical people, engineers and scientists who still do use the English units, and there are some, uh, Americans, American uh, engineers usually use metric, um, English units instead of metric, not all of them but m most of them do, um, they don't use yards, they don't use miles, what they tend to use is the foot or the inch and the pound as a unit of force and the second as a unit of time and then if they're using the foot system, they use decimal multiples or submultiples, as I said, if they're using the inch system, they do that. You know what I mean? So, um, as far as the English system as it's used in sort of technical fields go, um, there's re you know, there's not that much advantage to metric. The only thing with metric is it's slightly more codified and also has a sort of coherent set of electrical units. Um, but essentially they're quite equivalent. Um, yeah, so I'm sorry if this has been a rambling and dry little talk, but I wanted to make a video about this, um, and I can't think of a single interesting way to make this video on this rather dry topic, so uh, thank you for watching to the end if you did. Oh, by the way, I forgot, sorry. <laughs> um, you also say that nowhere in the world do they use Fahrenheit anymore, except in the US. Well, as I say, in the UK, it's more metric than imperial these days, or English, whatever. But we still do use Fahrenheit, um, and I've got the yesterday's issue of the Telegraph here. Hopefully you can make it out, but I'll show you. Do you see those ye little yellow circles? That's the uh, temperature in Celsius, and beneath that you see a little black bit. That's the temperature in Fahrenheit. So, you know, hmm.